We're live. Live. Here we are. What's up, gang? So, we have a very special guest today. Eva Claire Sinkowski. Full name. Full name. EC. Um, optimize, optimize Me Nutrition. Stud. CrossFit OG, if you will. Been doing this world of health and fitness for a long time. Long time. Um, so, little backstory. We're at the Reebok World Headquarters right now. She just spoke to the whole company about the 800 gram challenge, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which is part of our uh, wellness and fitness challenge we're giving for all the members here at the Reebok gym. And obviously we have a history. So I'll give a little bit of a history. Yeah. Um, I first met Eva Claire, maybe, I mean, on, on seminar okay. stuff. I was gonna say, I mean, if you wanna I call it- I was gonna say the 2010 games, but. Yeah, 2010 CrossFit Games when she was- I don't know if you was, call that met, but anyway. We crossed paths. <laughs> so she was um, working the CrossFit Games from a judging perspective. Mm -hmm. And we probably didn't know of each other's existence, but we've met. Mm -hmm. And then formally, I think it was during my internship. Okay, or, right? okay. At, Is that the Watertown at one? CrossFit Watertown. Wow. And we met there when I was interning uh, for Level 1 staff. And then subsequently got on staff. And then okay. she was essentially my yes. mentor That's right. for- till today. <laughs> and so basically everything that I know is just a distillation of what she has taught me or the pages of feedback I've gotten from her. That you got, yes, you yeah. got some feedback. So that's a little history and and now she uh, owns Optimize, Optimize Me Nutrition, uh, which is a, a nutrition company that I'll let, I won't speak to it as well as she can, but it's really awesome, some progressive stuff going on there. Lives out in Colorado now, um, just to, really just helping a lot of people one of the most well-spoken, well-educated people I've ever um, worked with and I'll known. pay you later, thank you. You got it, under <laughs> the table. Um, so, and then she was also my coach. She oh, coached right. She coached me uh, uh, as I was uh, an individual in the CrossFit Games for what, two years almost? Yeah, it might have been three seasons. Yeah. Three. Um, did you ever tell your vlog community about the dreaded split jerk workout that no. you almost died? Is, no, that a, is that the right time for this? Tell them. Tell them. Okay. No, I think you should take it though. All right. It's so, so scary. I so, can't even read so this. This is the highlight of our um, of our uh, coaching athlete coach relationship. So. <laughs> oh God. It was not always you know one of one of my favorite aspects of working with Eva Claire. She was a coach. She would come work with me too, where it wasn't just like you know remote coaching, where there was obviously a lot of that. But she would come watch. My Olympic lifts has have always been a weakness for me. So we would work on a lot of Olympic lifting together, and. We were doing heavy split jerks from the rack and maybe like doubles or something like something. that. And I just remember that I was like 275 or something, split jerked it. I brought it down to my back rack, but I wasn't braced. And I essentially broke my back in half. It, I'm pretty sure my spine went in the wrong direction. And all I saw was just you were vertical and then you were on the ground. And I, so I fell backwards with the weight and I was fine, thankfully. But I just looked over, James Hobart was there too. Yep. And you see, I looked over them and they were like, because what were they going to do? It, they were just speechless. It was really scary. It was really scary. But Thank I Thank God for the bumpers. Yeah, because like I mean, obviously when you fall backwards, it's, and you, when you actually fall, it's, um, you're fine. If you're, I think if, we called the workout after that. Yeah, we were done. We, were, we shut the training <laughs> down for the day. But Can we live one, relive one more workout memory? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember a, a workout that I put together? It was every minute on the minute for 20 minutes of a <laughs> of a very heavy sled push for like 10 meters or like 20 meters or something like that. And I had you and Spencer do it like all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, it had a name or something. And it was just like... Death. It was like the death march. And like we programmed it like once in a while, like a month really. And I just remember like I would have to con... There, there was a moment in time at, at, at Reebok, the old headquarters with the turf, um, there were people that would, I, I would do it with like four people. Yeah. They would sub in and out. Yeah. Like I'm not doing this alone. Um, so yeah, I'll never forget that. that we called it like a death good, march. Yeah. You always had some good comments for that one. Anyway. And uh, yeah, that, that was great. But, <laughs> so that's a little history on, 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 on our, our world mm -hmm. together. But obviously nutrition is always a hot topic. People love nutrition. Yes. And so I'd love to... If you hear the questions, right? Yeah. Let's just cut to the to the common Q and A. 
what should I eat in a day? Like people are like, what do I eat, right? Like I've done a, a day in the life and that people love that. But when people ask you, what should I eat? Yeah. Now it's a really broad question, but how do you, what's the, what, what's the, the quick yeah. answer? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I really do like the 800 gram challenge and I'm not trying to only say is that the only method you can be successful with other methods, but the 800 gram challenge is to eat 800 grams by weight of fruits and vegetables each day. And I really think it's almost a first step because what happens when you do that is you have a lot of quality in the diet and that also kind of indirectly affects quantity. So it gets after people's health goals and it can also get after some weight goals as well. And it's a, just a target, a simple target to hit every day. And it might not feel simple at first, yeah. but it's a way that, um, you know, you can really have something to hit that's doable. Um, so that would be my focus, that people really focus on whole on processed foods. Might not be 800 grams right out of the gate, might have to start with small baby steps, that's fine, but that's the direction that we want to go to, and I, I do think that the challenge kind of pushes people there. Yeah, and so I think that you, it depends on where you're, where you're on the spectrum, right? right? Where, you know, if if you're eating garbage food, and what do we mean by that? You know, processed foods, things that's like that. Food, yep. This is a great first step, because you might not get 800, but at least you learn what whole foods are. Mm -hmm. You start to understand a little bit, and it's funny because my journey was very different than, than the 800 gram challenge when I started. I zoned first. Oh, right. And I zoned crap. I zoned whatever I was currently eating. No, and, and by, by crap, I mean it was sandwiches and pasta, yeah, yeah, just yeah. traditional food. And that, you know, the uneducated, for lack of a better way to put it, eat without understanding what was in it. So what happened was for me was I wanted to eat more food. Got it. And the only way to eat more food in the, when you weigh and measure is to eat better quality food. Yep. So that was my journey. And, and so, and that, but what was funny was it, it took me, it was a really slow and gradual process, but it was also really maniacal, right? right. Yes. So that was, I mean, and, and that works for me because if you say, Austin, do this, I'm all in 100%. And I think that what's unique about the 800 gram challenge, which is the, almost the completely other way, the other way to introduce nutrition, which is just eat fruits and vegetables, 800 grams of it, do whatever the hell else you want. And it will happen is that you're just not going to eat as much because you're going to be full. Totally. And, and I think that for a lot of, a lot of us out there, nutrition is something that it's, for, it's hard to grasp. Mm -hmm. So just doing one thing and then rolling with it, you'll learn mm -hmm. as opposed to reading a book about whatever it might be. You'll learn because you'll know how much things weigh. Yeah. You're putting into practice. And that would be kind of my first step. And of course we're, we're talking primarily to a CrossFit audience. And so the next step would be kind of some protein, right? Of course, with wanting to get stronger, lean mass, like you do want to have protein in your diet. Um, and so that's kind of the order I approach people. I, I hate to say that there'll always be one template, but I think those really get after the goals with also understanding that diet isn't going to be perfect. Like you are going to enjoy a glass of wine or cookies or whatever your thing is that you like. And that's okay. Like food can also be fun. Right. And that's, and I think, I don't look at food as fun because I'm, I'm a whack job, right? And, and most people are like, look at me like I'm crazy. No comment. But what I do like is that I'm, so I'm starting the 100 gram challenge next Monday. We're worried about him. We're not sure if he's going to do it. And I'm legit worried because I'm a creature of habit. I don't eat a lot of food. No. And you know, as you, you know, as, as you guys have seen before, but you know, it has worked well. And I think that like the paradigm that myself and I know other athletes that fall into is, well, it's worked for me. Right. And I'm gonna have to change a lot up. I mean, it's it's hard to say. Oh man, eating more good food is gonna be worse for you, right? Certainly for someone that if you have a high output of, of working out and your days are long, so I'm a little nervous. So I'll I'll we'll, I'll keep you posted on how it goes. But I'm already thinking that my overnight oats have to be less oats, more fruits and vegetables. Definitely. Not vegetables, but like fruits. You'll have the overnight spinach is oh, a popular. Right. I'll put some kale in there. Like I put some chia seeds in my overnight oats the other day. I feel like a really. You used to do smoothies. Yeah, I used to do a lot of smoothies. You can get back to that. I know, it's just so much time in the morning. You know, like overnight oats, I'm a huge fan. It's like 4.30, I, I just pull that thing out. But you meanwhile do like the coffee pour, which takes 25 minutes. So, I mean, we have to pick our priorities, folks. It's true, it's true. <laughs> so, the long story short is, you know, again, my recommendation is the 800 gram challenge, I think, is something that you should try three, four weeks. To be honest with you, the hardest part is probably gonna be the first week. 
Then the second week is when I'll figure out what I what I liked and didn't like from week one, and week three it'll probably be super easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, would be my assumption there, specifically because like again, the the biggest challenge is food prep, mm-hmm. and a lot of meal services that a lot of us use are very high in protein, mm-hmm. and then very high in carbohydrates in the sense of like, rice or things like that. Mm-hmm and not super fresh vegetables and fruits for obvious reasons. So I know like those are things that I need to be working on a little better at. And last thing from, for nutrition Let's is there's keto, yes. there's intermittent fasting, there's yes. macros, there's, you know, there's all this stuff out there and it's, and, and you can pick up the phone and, and call someone and pay your hard earned money and they'll talk to you really about something that they could probably find on the internet for free. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm a huge fan of giving people the truth. Like, like I, I'm a, I, for, I hate in the CrossFit world, CrossFit business consultants that charge $600 a month to, for people to read a and l Sure, sure. Like, and then continually charge for a year. Yeah. Whereas if, if we do our job as teachers and educators, we have a couple sessions and, yeah, then, and then we're done. We're done. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that's why I don't personal train anymore. Like, I just don't really like it. So... What is, what, what, what is your knowledge, you know, what have you learned? What do you want to give to those that are thinking about that, that are, you know, I do think that there's value if all you want to do is talk to someone mm-hmm. from a therapeutic perspective, I think that's great. But just know what you're, know what you're yeah. actually doing there. Mm-hmm. That you're, you're essentially paying for therapy, yep. which is okay. But from a nutritional perspective, you could probably give them a under five minute explanation that will set them up for success. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of what I like to speak about most of the times when I talk about nutrition, because I think nutrition is confusing, and it, it really it comes down to eating the right amount of food for your weight and the types of food for your health. Right. And all of these diets out there really spin them different ways. Yes, there's some slants on macronutrients and protein consumption, but really what we're trying to do is not eat too much and eat the high quality stuff. And you can look at intermittent fasting, that's a way to control quantity. Keto is even a really way to control quantity, and because of the way that they do it, they also get in whole foods that way. Paleo is a way to control quality, but then because the food is so calorically not dense, it also controls quantity. So these factors keep get sliced and diced in different ways, and so there's not one method. It's kind of aligning yourself Right quality, right quantity, and then however you shake out in the specifics is the shake out in the different diets. Right. So the questions you need to answer for yourself is how much mm-hmm. and what types work for you. Mm-hmm. So and once and, and how much is it's not a super complex equation specifically in the beginning. Specifically if you're just trying to, you know, tighten up your diet, lose a little weight, or gain a little weight, where you know, if you're dealing with someone that's ten percent body fat that is super athletic and at a high level, it's very different. Right, but not, most of us aren't there. A lot of it's just start somewhere mm-hmm. and know how much that is, and then quantify based off: is it how I feel or how I perform, or you know, that's like how do I know it's working or not? Yeah, and I think you know a lot of people have performance goals and, and weight goals. Performance goals are very easy to quantify. Weight goals are also as well. If your weight's not changing, it's not working. And what I do find though is I do encourage people to get more specific if what they're doing not working. Like, so if you try cutting out soda and it's not working, then you try intermittent fasting and it's not working. That's a time when to start looking at macros. I don't think macros have to be everybody for everyone, I'm sorry, for everyone all the time, but it is the way to start really understanding what's going on. Oh shoot, I'm eating too much fat. And then you can maybe loosen the reins a little bit. Right. I love that. I think uh, for me, I zoned for so long, but I realized the amount of assumptions I was, I was making really good decisions. I didn't even know it. I was eating egg whites mostly. I was eat, you know, like, and you know, I watched Dr. Barry Sears and he was like, we eat egg whites because, you know, the, he would say the arachidonic acid and the mm-hmm. egg yolk. Yep. I didn't realize that if all you ate were whole eggs, the amount of of fat that you were taking in was so much higher than if I was just eating, you know, normal proteins, if you will. And that's where we see a lot of the times people that are doing things and not working, we just be making really simple mistakes that mm-hmm. were not high. I mean, for me, I, I was eating chicken and egg whites. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then doubling my fat so I knew exactly out, what yeah. I was getting. So I was, I was actually way more specific than the general prescription. Totally. Um, so those are things that now it's like really when you look at it, the caloric swing can be so crazy. And I know that I'll put a few links in there, but I know that you've written a few articles mm-hmm. that explain this, that literally it's a, it's one pager that, and you've also talked a lot about like 
it's like, like your deep article on OptimizeMeNutrition.com about like an in-depth analysis of, of macro and yeah. zones. Mm -hmm. I love that article because it will, it, for those of you that understand it, this will kind of blow your mind a little bit. It might be a little too heavy if like it's day one. Day one, just put some yeah. food on a scale and eat it. But this is, a, you know, I'll, I'll link that because that, that to me really helped. Um, and I'm a nutrition, you know, nerd, if you will. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. 800 grams. 800 do grams. It. Do it. So I'll post this up, and by the time I post it up, you guys, if you guys want to do it, let me know. I'll also link to uh, EC's pages and whatnot. So let us know what you think, and hopefully we did not bore the shit out of you. Thank you.